what do I say about women empowerment? Is it that correct? Yes. Uh, Dr. Hanan, please start Thank your you. introduction that how you started your work. Okay. Uh, first of all, thank you everyone for hosting me today amongst uh, amazing women in this webinar. Thank you, Dr. Ali and uh, Ms. Rabia for uh, today. My name is Hanan al Muhiri. I am the CEO and founder of Hanan Empire. Uh, so today I was invited to uh, later on maybe share my uh, PhD journey, my topic, and uh, um, support women generally on how they can uh, proceed further. So uh, women empowerment, I think one of the most uh, important, I think, topics uh, because, you know, when women growing up, uh, we are, there is culture, there is traditions. So sometimes if you are not knowing your rights uh, in terms of your right of your, of your education and basic rights, basically, uh, sometimes this can affect your well-being. It can affect how you are interacting in the community. So within... Uh, and Empire, we are trying always to raise awareness about women issues and also uh, support women uh, in general, you know, in workshops and all of that in order to fulfill their dreams. Great. So can you tell me what is the Hanan Empire? Uh, Ali, unfortunately, you are not audible. I am saying, I am saying, Hanan, what is Hanan Ampar? Okay, um, so Hanan Empire, when we started the organization, we, uh, we started uh, in May 2022. Uh, so there are, uh, there is a lot of drivers that uh, made me honestly to start uh, this uh, organization. Uh, but mainly we are specialized in training and mindset coaching. Um, so for, for example, uh, one of the things that we do in, uh, in our uh, organization is that we always try to raise awareness about the power of, uh, of mind. Uh, if it's possible uh, for the non-speakers to mute their voice so I can focus on uh, what I'm saying, it will be really uh, great help. Uh, so in Hanan Empire, we are trying always to um, to change the mentality uh, of the people because sometimes, uh, you know, um, we can attract the negativity uh, without intention to our life and in, in return we will get negative results. Um, so we have a lot of initiatives. We have run uh, one time a uh, free initiative for six weeks where we hosted uh, more than 80 participants and there were around 20 winners who uh, got one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching with me. So coaching is really important. Uh, as Sometimes, you know, you hear about personal trainers at the gym. Uh, but for me, I would think um, it's the same thing, but with the mind. So it's like uh, the coaching is personal trainer, but, but for your mind how you can really work together, how you can, let's say, design your vision board for your entire life, um, how you can design, you know, uh, your goals, how you can work towards them. So this is basically what we deliver in uh, Hanan Empire. We try to connect people with it. And we try to make their vision come to reality through coaching, through guidance and uh, continuous support. Oh, great. So, and your empire and uh, your previous background. So how do you think that women in our current era, how they can compete with the challenges like their social challenges and related to their family and our work, how they can do all this? Uh, see, one of the things that uh, women should start, not, not even women, any, both genders should do, is uh, to become more aware, uh, maybe read more books, uh, be, um, try to always educate yourself. Uh, yes, uh, for me, for example, as you know, Dr. Ali, I have pursued my formal education, but also there is other types of educations uh, be besides uh, the formal education, which I believe is very important. So for example, for the mindset coaching, I was uh, following uh, one, um, well-known mindset coach, his name is Bob Rocker. He passed away now, but I was following his work since 2016. And uh, this is, was one of the things that I wanted 
to learn after I finished my PhD studies. Like I really was uh, determined that after I finished my PhD, I am going to travel to Canada to get uh, a six month program with him in person. Unfortunately, when I uh, did my studies, I finished my studies uh, of the uh, doctorate program in, in, uh, in March 2022. And uh, Mr. Bob Proctor, he passed away on January 2022. Uh, but I was lucky uh, later on to find the two amazing coaches uh, who have been uh, early students for Bob Proctor, like for example, Miss Peggy McCall. She was one of the, his earliest students. Uh, so, uh, honestly, she has absorbed uh, the materials of Mr. Bob Proctor. She has been a very good friend of him. So, she lived with him. She knew how she uh, he's uh, doing things and all of that. So, I was really lucky to be exposed to her as a coach. So, uh, how what I advise women or men in general um, to pursue, like to, to accomplish their dreams, you need to have more awareness outside of the formal education to have a yeah. balance. For example, how I can, uh, what are the skills I need to do to accomplish my dreams, and how my formal education as well can enhance me, like and can enhance that. Yeah, great. Are you yeah. hearing me? Okay. Yes, Kune, please start. Okay. Um, okay. Um, I am Gunaima Madaba from Azerbaijan. I greet each of you, and I am glad to be here. Uh, my personal experiences um, as a female HR leader and our professional influence have created huge positive impacts along with various challenges. Here are some of the main challenges we face from our personal experiences and professional influence and how to solve them. Social and cultural pressures. Sometimes there may be stereotypes against women leaders and bias about women's leadership abilities. The solution is to express uh, yourself strongly and clearly. I think we need to show transparency and consistency to demonstrate our skills and results. Sometimes our relatives cannot contact us while we are in meetings or business trips. Yeah. We face the challenges yeah. of managing the home remotely while on business trips. Despite all this, we do our best. We should be proud of ourselves. Yeah. Woman, yeah. yes, woman is the most delicate and at the same time, the most powerful being created by God. I think it is difficult to maintain a balance between work and personal life. Sometimes I see solution in developing time management skills to manage work and personal life. Uh, it is our problem, I know. We need to set our priorities and get help and support when needed. I don't believe balance between work mm -hmm. and personal mm -hmm. life. I believe that personal life should be integrated into work and work should be integrated mm -hmm. into personal life. Yeah. For example, I am currently studying uh, studying and working in a leadership role as it is still. However, um, it is very noisy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, However, yeah. the basis of development is education. We successfully cope with this problem. We Muslim women are attached to the family. I take care of my child uh, 24 hours a day. I believe that this care does not end only with the child. Uh, this includes housework, taking care of women, and so on. It takes a lot of effort to come to work in a well-groomed shape every day. Yes. I think uh, leaders should appreciate that. And um, I wish all women courage, success, and independence. As saying, thank you, Ali Farhan, for invitation. Uh, thanks for my mini speech. That's all. That's all. Ah, grateful, ma'am. Thank you so much for your words. I really appreciate your time, your experience, and I hope you will enjoy our next talks also. You are the guest of honor of my today's yes. Women Virtual Summit 2024. And now I would like to proceed to Aisha Jamil. She is from Pakistan and a very renowned uh, working in arts and architecting. And she can share her experience as a woman, especially in Pakistan. Yeah, Aisha, please continue.
can you speak? Uh, yes. Uh, let me introduce Ms. Laura Bajin. She has also joined Mr. Ali uh, just uh, a few uh, minutes before. Mr. Laura Bajin is an esteemed uh, educationist. Uh, she's an expert from the UAE, dedicated to advancing education and empowering young women through knowledge and skills. Welcome, Ms. Laura Bajin. We have also uh, 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 our guest, Ms. Uh, at the time, I'm sorry if I'm uh, speaking her name wrong. She's Dr. Etek uh, Aitakin Hatsinova. She is Associate CIPD uh, Recruitment Manager, ADA University, um, Azerbaijan. I am very honored to have Dr. Hatsinova uh, with us. So uh, I would request Dr. Hatsinova to please uh, share your experience. Uh, Dr. Hasanova, are you listening? Dr. Atikin Hasanova, are you listening to me? It's okay. We can go to the Laura Brain. Laura Brain, she is renowned educationist and uh, well known in English. I guess there is a lot of echo. I cannot even hear you, Ali. But at my side, any voice is quite clear. Aisha, can you please check your internet connection? For me? Uh, Rabia, I can hear you, but I cannot hear really. I don't know what's going on. Okay, let me recheck. So, Aisha, am I audible? Aisha, you can start. Yeah, yeah, you are audible. I can hear you, but I cannot hear Ali. All right. Ali is introducing Laura Bidi, and he's asking Laura to please introduce herself. Please, Laura. Can you please speak? Can you please? Yeah, sure. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks, or good evening, depending on what part of the world you're in. Uh, thank you for that introduction. I know there's some issues with audio here. So I'm originally from Ireland, and I've been living in the UAE for five and a half years now. So <clears throat> I have like two different experiences, I guess, and living in two very different countries where I can uh, compare my experiences. Um, as Ali or perhaps Aisha mentioned, um, I'm an education specialist and I work in Zaid University in Dubai, mostly with young Emiratis. That takes about 90% of our cohort. 70% um, of those are actually, 70 to 80% are female. So um, it's been amazing working with young female adults and being able to relate to them and prepare them for the workforce as well. Um, something that I feel like I can contribute to them is really helping them with their confidence. Obviously, the UAE is a conservative society. You know, there's still very traditional values and norms and they take, you know, it takes a lot of encouragement and confidence building um, with Emirati females to have them feeling comfortable because most of them, if not all, have gone to um, single sex uh, school. So this is actually their first time where they're in a room or in a working space and they're working with the opposite gender. So it can be quite a daunting task for them. Um, so it's really fulfilling to be able to kind of coach them along with their social skills and um, really helping them, you know, introduce them to how to kind of mix with the opposite gender while still respecting cultural norms and traditions. Grateful. And uh, Laura, any hard experience that you have been ever as a woman? Unmute, please. Yeah, I would say every month. <laughs> it's a hard experience being a woman. Yeah. Um, you yeah. know, obviously we have different bodies, different needs, different wellness systems. And it is slowly being introduced around the world that 
um, you know, there's some parts of Asia and even European countries have adopted the menstrual leave. Um, so I think that this would be a really progressive thing for workplaces to actually start introducing is some flexibility maybe two or three days a month because obviously every woman is different and some some ladies can suffer very severely from symptoms so having that type of flexibility is a type of equity because um that is a difference that you need to respect i think between men and women and you asked me about my experiences i personally suffer a lot every month and um I guess it's kind of difficult because you're not going to walk around your workplace with, with a hot water bottle and there's kind of some embarrassment if your male colleagues ask you what's wrong with you. So it would be great to destigmatize all of that. And also, um, like I said, if we had the flexibility of working from home, perhaps. Ah, OK. Ah. Really inspiring. Thank okay, you. now I want to ask the Hani Nabad. Hani Nabad is there. Can you speak? Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, welcome. Yeah, actually, hello everyone. I'm honored to be here today to talk about women's independence, especially at the time when we're seeing more and more women, uh, especially in Jordan taking charge of their lives, careers, and communities. Uh, as a clinical pharmacist and as a youth activist, I've been seeing how women's independence can make a big difference in our life and society. Um, actually, when it's come to independence and health, for sure, in healthcare, independence means having the power to make decisions about our own health, whether it's about a healthcare professionals or as a patient. It's important uh, that women in Jordan have an access to the right information and can choose their best of them. When we are informed and empowered, we can ensure that our healthcare is personalized and respectful for our needs, actually. And when we're just saying about social and cultural independence, actually independence isn't just about our jobs or health, it's also about breaking away for outed ideas about what women can or cannot do. Actually, in Jordan, we are lucky to have a society that increasingly supports women in leadership and innovation. Actually, independence means when we can define our own paths and make choices that reflect what we truly are. Uh, for the part of the world of youth, since I am in the youth age, uh, actually, as a youth activist, i um, excited about the role young people can play in shaping the future. Actually, young women in Jordan are leading their way in many areas, whether it's social justice, uh, entrepreneurship, or even technology. Their independence is not about just personal success. It's about creating positive changes in our society, actually. Uh, just to not make the story long, in conclusion, the independence of women is about more than just having rights. It's about using those rights to build better lives for ourselves and actually for our communities. It's a journey that we are all on together and I'm confident that by supporting each other, uh, we can continue to make our great success. I just want to thank Dr. Ali for the invitation and for all of you for listening. Uh, it's just a pleasure to hear from all of the women all over the world by virtual summit. And thank you. Always welcome and honor. Uh, but stay here. <laughs> uh, now, Aisha, can you speak? Check your speaker. No. Okay, Martin Umar is here. Martin Umar. Are you listening me?
एंड डॉक्टर आयतकन डॉक्टर आयतकन आर यू लिस्टिंग मी Ramya, you you are mute. Okay, Ma'am Ambreen, can are you listening me? So I would like to uh, ask Ms. Ambreen Askari uh, about her experiences as an empowered lady and. Uh, would you please tell us share us about the independence of women in our country and your role sure. and how did you start it yes i'm ma'am amreen you can speak now okay uh, thank you so very much farhan and rabia rabia i was unable to uh, send your question but i have understood what you have asked so hello everyone and uh, thank you so very much for having me on this platform where we can speak about women empowerment and independence uh, first of all let me introduce myself uh, my name is amrina skri i'm corporate trainer educationist i'm the head of the school i'm parenting expert and uh, it was not easy to become all these you know expert in all these area it's been 20 years uh, i have been in this profession and when i started my work at that moment i was too young but married um i got married when i was in when i was in class 10 and uh, four to five years i was totally housewife i was serving my family i was having two kids but at one point i realized that i have to do something in my life um yes uh, my uh, life personal life was going very well but there was some urge to learn to do something for myself to grow so i took permission from my husband that i want to grow i want to resume my studies so mm. i started my studies again i used to study late night i uh, have uh, you know uh, did different certification to just upgrade myself and it took me you can say it was not easy for me to balance my home and my studies and then i started my job but alhamdulillah i tried my best to balance my life because i was having two kids i my family my in laws used to live with me so when i started my work again i managed my home and my work so it's been easy there was many challenges there were lots of hardship disappointments were there frustration was there when sometimes, sometimes you stuck somewhere and you're not growing can you hear me yes yes thank you lord okay so that journey was not easy right so uh, one thing i have learned that if a woman uh, wants to do something and she has a passion she can do anything right yes in pakistani culture now things are changed but if you see uh, 20 years back the things were a bit difficult although there were education system let, girls are studying a lot but when you once you get married at that moment it become difficult for you to carry on your career or your studies because you have to look after your family also your kids also and most of the time what happen that if a woman is thinking to do something she has to think about her family first yeah. right and most of the time they get you know people are not supporting at that moment which i have seen but in my case if i say that yes my family has always supported my in-laws my husband were always with me they guided me also but i one thing i did that i never wanted to make them uncomfortable so what i did that when i pursue my studies and my career at the same moment i was also take caring of my family and my kids and mashallah my kids have grown up now so for me what is independence when you know what you need to do when you have a freedom to make decisions when you know that what is your future what are your goals independent does it mean that you just leave your home and you wherever you want to go whatever you want to do where that is not independence independence when you know what are your rights what how you have to take care of your own health your own well being because in pakistan in many areas in rural areas 
ladies and women don't know what are their rights and they are suffering they are unable to speak about their rights and you know it's man dominant culture over here but now uh, because of the empowerment because of the awareness because of the social media ladies now getting awareness of this but i must say that independence does it mean that you just take wrong advantage of this right as a muslim i know my limits i know my boundaries if you want i want to excel in my life i want to do, do something i have always take decision and i have always included my family in my decision that just let me know that i am doing right or wrong now my kids have grown up so now i am able to think my career more because there are many goals which i want to achieve and in the same way uh, i am also you know encouraging women how they can pursue how can they balance their life i give them sessions sometimes i voluntarily doing this work because i have seen many talented women those who have skills those who have you know something in their hand but nobody supporting them nobody encouraging them nobody guiding them so voluntarily i have started this work that uh, what are the limits uh, in their limits i told them that how you can pursue your career and how can you make your life better yes shall i say more ah <laughs> uh, okay so uh, thank you very much ms kamini uh, now i would move to work ms mardin umar ms mardin umar is a full stack developer and she's uh, from iraq that is uh, we all uh, very familiar with uh, the current condition of the country uh, so she is uh, one of the female who is breaking the barrier in tech industry uh, welcome miss mardin can you please share your views about uh, independence of women mardin i think uh, unfortunately uh, she has uh, she is here Ms. Mardin, can you listen? Mardin. Oh, Kurdistan is here. You can start from Kurdistan, Yasin. Hello everyone. Um, my name is Chris Anyasin. I'm from Hello. Kurdistan. Hello everyone. Um, Hello guys, could you hear me please? Mm. Now Martin, please wait. Kurdistan continue. Okay. I am from Kurdish. Oh, uh, I speak Kurdish. Uh, I am um Yeah, please. yeah, you can speak in your language. I know you cannot speak English well. It's okay. I will ask someone to translate. Uh, I not have um, any uh, perfectly on speaking English. Uh, it's okay. Bala, um, the speak a noun Kurdistan Yasina, called you Kurdistan Yarakam. Waku spaz nama spaz wo yo ke bangladesh na kadam wo. ديداره استرتا اكو كرتيك لباس كردني من لنا وكارك يخون من صالة كوانم ما ويكي زورا من زيكي لحبدا صالي وحفاش صالة ايشي صالة جيدكا من زيكي صالة كوني ويا اكو بربستي بيوندي اكاني سنتر يروشن بيري صورا دز بكاربو طبعا اكو سيرو چي كسي من شواني مالني او باريك كارلي لكم كوماليك بابد بورو جينم كبتوان كاري غيرم نسلر دورو برو كومال داوت بيقوما لكار كردن دازور زار عارين قالن غاري و بربستي زور هات كدينا بيشما بويا صابون بسر و بربستانا بر بربستانا رنجي توزيك زحمد بيت بلام ايدي وري كسي و عن داني دورو بار زور زارو عن لي كردن كبسر و حالن غاري عن اتبار بكاين وكو باسي شمكرد ازموني من لنو كومال قادة توزيك رنقب 
طوزيك سخدو بيتو كلا <hesitation> ناوتي كي جوغرافي بيرتاسيك <hesitation> مكيشو يا فريت طوزيك زحمتا <hesitation> بوي رانكا بو من طوزيك سخد بو بيت عاد مكيشوا بيوكمان ولا همو ديانيش <hesitation> كيشي كي بربلاوكا عاد مكيشو يا فريت خا بتايبت كلا ناوتي كي جوغرافي وكو سكر بيرتاسك ولاني كو ملايتي رانكا طوزيك زحمت بيت بويا بومنيش بيوكما لانكاري زورا بو بلام <hesitation> تاستا زور باشينا و بسر و علنگاری انا دازا اما و بگو من دست که و تی زور باش ما ما دستی نا و ریش کردن ما و که هات نکیش رو بانی و که مانگا لما و را بردوش نا نوسی نی زور باش ما و که این کاری انا سر و کردو تو انا فرد بتوانی نتیگشنی که درستان اللی که مانگا درست ببرم بر با فرد و تایبت هنده که و شهن راست خو لگل نوی افراد و کردن تگیش نیکی جوری که هم بوی همیشه ولم داور لرگی نوسیم بیت یا خود لرگی تلاش کردم ام بابتانه بوروجین او وسیعی او کب تگیش نیکی درست بر باب کم و کوکار کردنیم نیش که بر پسی بیان دکانی سنتری روشن بیری سوار هم میگو من و کوکار کاری خم حالا کی زورم داور که لمسالی آزادی جنگ و رول یافرت و هنر نپیشو یافرتان کاری لسر بکم و تایبت تالاکی کنم تالاکی کنیم ما کوسنتر و بتوی روشن بیریشیم روشن بیری بیشتیش کاری گری چی زور زوری ده بتوی لسر هات نپیشو یافرت و تیگندی خزان کن با درستی هات نپیشو یافرتان و کو پناسی که اگر باز پناسی کل سر بخویش نام کم مرز نیه همیشه کنای سر بخوی هات کمالی بابت بولو جنگن که رنگ جوره کل جوره کن نادرست بن بویم هات نپیشو یا فرتان کار کردن یا لدر وی مال و تکه هون یا لدر سنوری در وی مال وایم رنگ آن د زحمت نبود و هات نپیشو یا بر بر بستانش جوره بل نادرستی و پیشو کردنی ما فی آن بوده آزادی و سر بخوی ل موتو و ل حد نپیشو یا فتان بگیرم دزانم و کو دعاتو جنان لبوار روشنی پیمان بابت پرسی روشن بیری گشتی کاریگری چیز دور زویان هم هر لسر وی که پرسی یا فتان زیادتر برای پیش رو بین تو که کاملا گو خزان رو لش کاری گریانه لسر هنر پیش رو یافت لطفا اول روشن بیاری گشتیش بگو من کاری گری چیز زور زوری داره لسر حال هنر پیش رو یافت لطفا هم بزیاری و پیامی که من با یافت لطفا توی آن که بتوانن لگو خزان کیان تیگش نشی دروز دروز بکن باوی بتوانن لکو مالگا در رو لش کاری نمیبینن تو که نیوی کامل جا بدست آفرت او دایکی نیو که ایتریشتی به پیمان بروکش بودن و روشن بیاری آفرت آم بروکش بودن کامل جا و کامل جا سپاس همیت. آه. Do you have any question? Yes, I asked the Martin that she can talk to you because she is a same language. Hello everyone. Hello, Miss Kurdistan. So she loved the meeting. So are we, Miss Kurdistan? Could you yes. speak English? But you maybe you know that mostly they couldn't speak, understand English. Why you speak Kurdish? Could you mm -hmm. translate it? If you translate it, it will be better in front of me. I don't know what you said. Uh, Kurdistan, you can just tell her exactly. She can translate in English and to summarize with us. Yes. If... So let's speech. Okay. Okay, guys. Thank you. It's okay. You can start, Martin. Your introduction. Okay. Hello, everyone. I'm Martin. I'm 23 years old and I'm from Kurdistan in Iraq. I'm truly honored to be here today at the International Women's Summit 2024 
organized by GCSS Pakistan, the summit is a remarkable opportunity for women around the world to share our stories. Stories of, of overcoming challenges, embarrassing opportunities, and forging our paths with realizes and determination. <clears throat> my journey to become I'm a full stack developer, my journey to become as a full stack developer and project manager has been shaped by both personal and professional experience, each playing a, a crucial role in who I am today. <clears throat> I'm grow, I'm, I'm grow up in a small village in Arbil, where access to the education, and especially for girls, was a significant challenge. Most of the people around me were illiterate, and the idea for girls pursuing education was not only uncommon, but uh, often dis discouraged. My parents, however, were de determined to give me a chance at the better future. I remember the long weeks to school, often facing a scarcity uh, and uh, dis uh, discouragement from those who believed a girl's place was, was at home. But I know that education was my, was my key to breaking free from the li limitation imposed by uh, my uh, environment. Continues my education into uh, university was another painful battle. What those early experience in my village taught me realizing and the value of uh, perseverance. These qualities have been my grandest light throughout my career in the tech industry. <clears throat> I began my professional journey as a graphic designer, where I honed my skill in a visual communication and digital marketing. However, my passion for technology led me to trans into full stack developer. Today, as uh, today, as a full stack developer, I work at a tech technologies like HTML, CSS, and build and maintain web application. This role allows me to see my project through from concept to deployment, and there's nothing more significant than turning ideas into functional impact produce. As we finally, as we gather here today, I'm excited to share more about my experience and learn from the incredible women who are part of the submit. This event is uh, celebrated of our collective strengths and realizing. And I believe that by sharing our stories, we can inspire and empower each other to achieve even great highest. And thank you and thank us for this nice opportunity. Always welcome and in my honor. My thank you so much. Uh, Rabia, Aisha, you. Sizra, check kiji. Aisha can speak or not. Aisha, I'm um, audible. Aisha, uh, Ali, can you hear me? Yes, Aisha, we can hear you. 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 Yes, Aisha, like uh, uh, you talk about the the content question, or I'm getting wrong with it. No, I'm saying that. Like, would you like to continue, or shall I start? Mm, no, no, start. I just ask uh, the the Miss Kurdistan okay. if you want to translate the, the Kurdish to English. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Please okay. keep going. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ali, for uh, like inviting me for this uh, panel. And thank you so much for connecting with all other females, wonderful females, I would say, around the globe. Uh, it's a great opportunity to come all along to discuss what are the challenges, what are the um, circumstances um, which are which we are going through in our daily, daily life, whether it's a professional life or business life. So I would like to start myself. Um, I started my career back in 2013. Uh, I'm a corporate professional. Uh, when COVID came, then 
uh, I was working from home, of course, like like everyone. So at the time of COVID, I realized that what's going on? Like, there's a job of nine to six, and there is nothing else after nine to six. Then I made a plan with my sister that we shall we 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 all have a dream uh, somehow, like big or small dream, to become something, to make something, or to come up with something. So I already had a dream always to start a small business. Um, I started with my sister, like whether, whether to start with a clothing business because we we had uh, so much interest in the fashion and all. Maybe we can start with the food business and all. So then we had an idea to start a small business, which is resin art. My friend started it. Then I was like, okay, let's, let's give a start. Uh, start was really good. But in the start of that business, I had no support from my any of the family member. Not the immediate family. My I had a support of my brother and father and mother and sister. But from the cousins and the other family member relative, nobody supported me. Nobody even bothered to buy a small product for me. Nobody even bothered to share my profile to other people that hey he has started a business and all but fortunately my friends and my my colleagues they boosted my business to the next level um i had a very good successful business which was small business which is still a small business from 2020 2021 but in 2022 i had a, a huge gap in my business that for a whole month i had no sales like I did promotion on social media, I did promotion on Facebook, but there was something which was bugging me a lot. That it's been a month, I never had a single order. I requested my friends and family to please share my, my profile with other people, share how I, I'm making things. Uh, I sat back for a month and I was like, what? I don't know what's going on, whether shall I close this business, whether shall I like move on to something else. I was having this conversation with myself, then one of my clients, she asked me, can, uh, like, can I teach her? And I was like, no, I'm not even getting a single order from last one month. How can I teach you? Then again, uh, I got another um, a reply from my another client that, can you teach me? Then one night I stayed sat back and I was like, why not? Why not to teach the skill which I have to other females and make them financially stable? Then I started uh, my first online workshop, which was uh, for the resin art. And uh, Alhamdulillah, I had 15 female students and now there were those 15 female students have started their own page and they are running a small business as well. So uh, from that step, which was, uh, from that step I started, I believe that I can make a change in other life. Maybe I, I should start from females because if I bring a change in one female, uh, that would not be the change for herself, but that be, would be the change for the generation which are coming after her. That would be a change for the society and that would be the change for for the Pakistan as well. Um, that I had a really good response. I, my students are still working. They're still doing business and all. Um, now I, I am planning on the next step and I'm going for the physical workshop in which I have like more than 20 people. They are joining in. I'll be teaching them this skill. After that, I had a plan like why not to do for those people who are unable to uh, buy these things, who are unable to get enrolled themselves why not to start for them so i had a plan that i'll go to the orphan school which is for females uh in rawal pindi and islamabad and i'll teach orphan females this skill so they can uh, become more financially stable they can support at least themselves and their, their families so this is what the goal is currently to make um, female in pakistan uh, firstly of course to make them financially stable so they can they can have a peaceful life, they can have a wealthy life, and they can particip participate in this economy growth of Pakistan. Uh, that's it for my side. Okay, thank you so much. My honor. So, Mardin Umar, now you can check from Kurdistan if you can understand, you can tell us what she was saying. Oh, she is not there. Okay, so we have still two other speakers, but they are unable to join. So I think Laura Breen, you can say something more. Sure. What would where where would you like to lead the conversation? So you enjoyed so uh, like today's woman interaction. Yeah, of course. It's great to connect with and hear from people actually all over 
and hear from different experiences. Um, I've been reflecting when listening to everybody sharing and <clears throat> like it seems that obviously some needs um, for women are much higher on the priority list than others. So I was, yeah, absolutely. So I guess I'm just feeling grateful and I have to um, check my privilege as well. And, you know, coming from a, a Western country where the independence part might be the other end of the spectrum where um, like we're kind of hyper independent and then moving here like to the UAE made me reflect on that too. And there's definitely um, some, yeah, some gratitude to be expressed and uh, it gives perspective just listening to different people's experiences and all the different needs that we have in uh, different areas of the world. Ah, great. And uh, originally you are from which country? Ireland. Ireland. And you are working in UAE? Yeah, in Dubai. Oh, in Dubai. And uh, what do you think that in next 10 years, uh, in your country, more opportunities are coming or in you, in Middle East? for the woman and overall for the business? Um, I mean, that's that's a good question. I guess the the Middle East is probably progressing at, yeah. a, much, yeah. at a much steadier pace, for sure. And there's, hopefully there's going to be more, um, you know, more focus on, women in leadership and more initiatives to uh, push women forward so that they have that confidence. And I think, you know, typically there are a lot of, um, well, the workplace in general, of course, is a male dominated domain uh, traditionally. And it is only in the past number of years, depending on the region that women have, you know, we've kind of, carved our own path in that mm. so I think something that just from my personal experience and speaking to other women that women in leadership can sometimes feel like they're suffering kind of from imposter syndrome and it can feel maybe sometimes unnatural or a little bit difficult when you're given orders to maybe males for example I'm just yeah. speaking from my own yeah. experience and comparing you know how as women we operate at work and we operate in the workplace it's quite different to how men operate in the workplace yeah so, yeah. so i guess there's um there's a balance to be had and i think the, and the more as time goes on and the more initiatives that will be in place hopefully will find more comfortable, will be more comfortable with uh, stepping up proudly and not just modeling leadership behaviors on a man, but like finding our own way to do it um, proudly. Ah, great. Okay, so now I am opening the floor for 10 minutes. If anyone can speak anything, we can listen. Otherwise, we can conclude today's summit. Yeah, anyone who wants to speak? Uh, okay. Ali, I would just like to add a suggestion. Yeah, please. Sorry, Amreen. You, you, can, you can go on. Please, please, Aisha, go ahead. So I was just thinking, like, can we can we have a group of all the females who have been like giving the sessions? So um, in future, if, if there would be something, yes. we'll be able to connect with each other. Uh, sorry, I'm not getting you mean the contacts of other women. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh okay. No, I no, can share. Can we yeah. have a group? Can we have a group collectively all along with you? No, no, I will send uh, individually who wants to talk with someone that I cannot send okay, in the okay, group. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. Yes, no, ma'am. Or, or maybe can can we have a group over the Instagram as well? If, if, uh, if I, I, I will let you know for that. Sure. Yeah, ma'am Amreen, yes. 
Uh, I'm just, uh, mashallah, everybody uh, spoke so well and they everyone shared uh, their experiences uh, and it's really good to know everyone. I really appreciate people from Iraq and all over the world, they are here and it's really good to know that how everyone is struggling all over the world. Uh, women are struggling and, uh, but they actually has, uh, you know, value, some value in the society also. Uh, no doubt, uh, like in Iraq, in Iraq, there were so many, there are restrictions more than in Pakistan, but still they have excelled, they have showed uh, their selves. So I really want to appreciate everyone. And Farhan, this is very uh, good initiative that you just, you know, brought everyone at one platform and we get to know that how they have struggled. Thank you. So I must uh, appreciate and must say that you must continue this thing. So uh, we must know that how other people are, you know, excelling. And if ever they require any help from us, uh, if you think that we can add some value and experience which we have, so we are available over here. I'm also uh, always available over here. So uh, uh, really, these are friends. I really respect them. And I have learned a lot also. So thank you so much for, for providing this uh, uh, platform. And I second uh, Miss Aisha that yes, if you can create a, any platform where we can all in, interact with each other, it would be very good for us also. So we can learn more from our culture. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. So, Mardin Umar, just translate what the Kurdistan wants to say, then we can end. Oh, Dr. Aithan, can you speak? You are here now. Dr. Aithan was the special guest of today's okay. event, but due to her internet problem, she could not join. She is the uh, senior professor of ADA University, Azerbaijan. Ma'am, please, if you are listening to me, speak. Yes, thank you very much uh, for this invitation. It's an honor for me to speak at this conference. I also, it's a great pleasure. I'm delighted to meet uh, all young ladies who joined us today. And I think the topic uh, is very um, up to date. It's a hot topic nowadays. Yeah, How freedom of manage. women. <laughs> yes, freedom of women at work, freedom of women at home. Uh, and considering the fact that most of us from uh, Muslim countries, because Azerbaijan is also a Muslim country, so the, the primary role of woman uh, is seen as a mother, first and foremost. But beside that, we also try uh, to, to maneuver at the same time to balance uh, our, our home responsibilities, our children, our family, and try to reach some career goals, uh, try to get higher education as high as possible. Um, and talking from my own perspective, as a Muslim majority nation, uh, Azerbaijan also uh, place a significant emphasis on a woman's role. And this responsibility, I felt, uh, I felt it from childhood, but however, uh, if uh, I will speak from my own um, experience, my uh, academic pursuit started as soon as I graduated from school. Uh, it continued with uh, unlimited passion for education. So I got all uh, possible degrees that any human can achieve. I have my MBA, I studied abroad. Uh, considering the fact that I also, I'm a mom of four children, so I'm trying to balance my children. On the other hand, uh, I had my PhD recently defended. I'm also at the uh, management position at the university. I also have teaching uh, responsibilities at university. So considering all that, I think that uh, there is I mean, we don't have limits for our passion. So if we are passionate for something, no matter man or woman, uh, I, I'm sure that I'm pretty sure that we can reach that. The major factor here is our the, the support we get uh, from the family, the support we get from our parents, the support we get from our spouses. Uh, so considering this uh, continuous support.
uh, I think uh, it gives us uh, an inspiration, motivation of uh, enhancing our career, or being promoted uh, at our jobs, and reaching more higher goals. Yeah, great. So, ma'am, what you think that in next 10 years and uh, in your experience, you uh, are a teacher also. So, the woman can explore a number of things. Now, we have a lot of like media and different things and they are well aware about the thing. So, what do you think as a Muslim, women are going towards uh, following the values that they have in tradition or they are just following the culture that we have in West and it's like a uh, freedom is mixed with some other culture. What do you think? You got my question? I think no. Martin Umar, you oh, got the uh, Kurdistan's view? Did you hear me? Yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. You can speak. So just I wait to the to Miss Kurdistan said me some something that I couldn't translate for it. That I just I wait for her that sent me something. Yeah, what she was going to say, you can tell us just because I will share her clip in her language. But we right. want to know what she said. Yes, okay, okay. As you know, my my internet is down, and I I couldn't hear what she said exactly. So okay. just I waiting for her. Just send me something, and okay. I will share with you. Yeah, sure, sure. And sorry about that. It's okay. So Miss Kurdistan, I got the TV her hour, but. could you hear me guys yeah 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 please please Yes. Yeah, uh, Martin Bala. Uber, you can speak. Khatun Martin. Martin. Anyone hear me? Yes, yes, you can speak. I think she is not there. I'm here, but my internet is broken a lot. Sorry about that. I don't know. It's mostly happening in Iraq. It's okay. I understand. Every time I have a problem with the internet, it's... Yeah, you just can't speak what she said. Okay. Just, just flow on. Okay, okay. Kurdistan Khanbas and it was like Bassi and the Stipka, but I am Lemu and Ternate Kamatati Agnetsu. Tamam Jana Kamukubas and Kraman Zikay do a who in the Namras to Ho, uh, Okho does any ally Emata dwells the South Ho and the Nadwaiwala, the Gul Sunumbukuli, the Stamakari, a Tala Kwanikert, a Watamoda Ishkirnim and Framambu, do a well like Koma like Rekra, do a Koma like Rekra, a Koma like Babatizur. زورم نسي وتبدا بلاك نيروشن بيري غشتي او تي يعني برسي افتان دني كومال باشا زور باشا با اون دي لبوان باس بكم اوتا شي سيد ذات 
after I graduated from the the university, and I will a lot. I did a lot of research about the women, and I wrote a many research for them. And now uh, she works as an active person about this field. Okay. So yes, yes, please. And Zorba si oida kan ka la da ha tu da tu هدف التيا زور وات يعني جول التيا بدات هي بي بتي زياتير مو افرات الكوي كبيت افرات تشي كاريجر وسركر دا بتوانا لنا نكون وقدا رول بجيري بوي زور بي او تيجيش ناني كهنا برام بربع افرات غوران كاري انا مسر بيتو تيجيش ناك عندو رزبان اوكي اي اسكت هير وات وي وونت تو بي ان ذا فيوتشر اند شي سيت لايك افري وومن she want to manage every uh, field or uh, this work that's this field that work it there and uh, as uh, as we know in iraq it's the, the, the work for women it's really hard to be a woman and to work outside and she said i uh, faced a lot of problem uh, to work outside ah okay i got it Thank you so much for everyone. I hope you enjoyed the today's summit and I tried my best to make everyone online to be at one floor. And I am sorry if someone has the internet problem. This is the problem beyond from my limits. And uh, inshallah, next time I will be I happy hear. to invite you all in different I cannot hear you. Ways Thank you. Thank you. And in different topics. And uh, obviously, uh, it's my great honor and you gave your time and especially Dr. Aithan, Ms. Kune and Martin Kurdistan, Ma'am Ambreen and Aisha and my MD. She is always with me, Rabia Khan and all. I really feel thankful to you and see you next time also. And I will share the recording as well on my pages and to you also. Thank you. Thank you for all of you. Thank you to your me today. I really appreciate all of you. We learned a lot of things uh, to each other. And thank you again. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. So nice to meet you all. Meet thank you. All. Yeah, thank you, Farhan, for like bringing us all together in, in the one room. Uh, looking forward to have more session and live session as Inshallah. well. Inshallah. Inshallah. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Allah Fez. Allah Fez. Yeah. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Welcome.